Well, we are L-A-T-E late, and we apologize to you. We had a big thunderstorm, and it knocked everything out, and God resurrected it. So this is a revenant program. We are back from the electrical dead. Here we are, and we're ready to bless you tonight. So much is going on around here at the Harv. We'll be sharing some of that with you in a little bit. We've got some guests that are going to share with you. And I have a word for you tonight. As I told you, I, I look forward to, I really, really do. It's not rhetoric. I look forward to being right here sharing with you every Wednesday night. But I'm a little disheartened because I need more of you to get involved. You know, faith without works is dead. And you're a person of faith. So that's what Brother Summerall would say. Faith without works is dead, so why don't you get to work? So we want you to get to work. We want you to like. It's not hard. You just hit that little button or click that little button, and however you do it, you know, just let everybody know that you enjoy these Wednesday nights together and comment why. Somebody type in right now why I ask you to comment. It's because I'm a certain type of preacher. No, wait a minute, don't say old. I'm a certain type of preacher. I'm an audience participation preacher. And what that means is, if you don't comment, I don't speak this living word to you. Now, you know I'm going to speak it anyway, but I sure hope that you'll join me, that you'll participate, that you won't just be a consumer, that you, right there where you are, will be a contributor to the word of the Lord God Almighty being shed abroad all the way around the globe. You know, recently, we just added to the Great Breakthrough Network millions and millions and millions of homes in their native language. Those include the entire nation of Russia. It includes the entire nation of Ukraine. It includes that shimmering diamond on a velvet couch, the exact geographic center. Well, look at that. These folks in here are so bright and they are so uh, anticipatory. They, they know something's coming. He talked about it. And they go through searching through that big old file they've got back there, and they found the graphic. Right there it is. So you can see 244 million new households. Brand new. Now, we've been broadcasting in these areas for many, many, many years. Breakthrough for nearly 40 years now, as many as 12 times a week, you understand. But what's happened now is that we're able to do it in all those native languages. Look at that. How overwhelming is that? Plus, their language will be in the lower third, we call it, right down there at the bottom of your screen, as well as translated into their native language, all across Africa. Why'd you lose me? All across Africa, all across Israel, all across Ukraine, all across the expanse of Russia. Why? Because I want to preach in the Gog of Magog area of the world because the time is drawing near. Do you know that I know exactly when Jesus is coming? If you stay till the end of this, this message, this time together tonight, this live stream, as they would call it, I'll share it with you. I'll tell you exactly when Jesus is coming. But you have to stay to the end. No, I'm not going to do that. You know I'm not. I know exactly when Jesus is coming in an hour that you think not. He's coming. And there are multiplied hundreds of millions that are not anticipating thunder rolling out of a dark-throated storm cloud. They're not anticipating that he's coming. He could come before I sign off tonight 
for his church, not in the second coming, you understand. Those two things are seven years apart, but he could come in the rapture of the church, hapazo, the catching away of the bride of Christ. So make sure everybody's ready, share. You are our online, very important person. We love you so very, very much. So much, I've got a special download for you tonight. I remember when God the Holy Ghost gave me this message right here, power through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I preached it at Dominion Camp Meeting. I preached it in three different parts, a sound, a wind, a fire three major attributes of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they're all right here for you in this little booklet, and you can read the whole thing before you go to bed tonight, and it's my gift to you. Just for being right there, share your email with me. The instructions are right there on your screen. Thank you for doing that. So many of you are doing it. I ask them every week, do the people really want to receive these free gifts that I bring to them on Wednesday night, they said, Pastor, please don't stop. So many are connecting with our ministry. So thank you. We love you. And we're going to keep ministry coming to you 24 hours a day. All the instructions are right there at the bottom of your screen. Well, I'm going to go over here and I am going to talk to some young people that think I'm very old, but I'm really not. Mr. Producer, what am I doing? Am I going over here? Are you going to follow me? Well, let's see if you see you cut my head off because I moved too fast for you, didn't I? Well, that lets you know that we're live. Come on, y'all. Come on, Kiara. Come on, Gabe. I want you all to join me right here because I want to talk for a moment about Valor Christian College, the School of the Spirit, summer internship, which begins is the last time on Wednesday night, I can talk about it because it begins June the 13th and it goes through July 11th. One summer to change your life. Do you believe that, Gabe? I do believe it. Gabe, tell me where you're from. I'm from Anaheim, California. Wow. Oh, I just remembered something. You were here at a Dominion camp meeting. Oh, yes. Pastor Sam Rodriguez, who's going to be with us again, at Dominion was preaching and he gave some kind of an appeal for folks to come to the altar. And I saw these young men standing down there and the Holy Ghost moved on me. And I said, how many years ago was that? Uh, that is exactly six years. Six years ago. Yes. Six years ago. So I had just come back from being diagnosed with vocal cord cancer at that point. And I jumped up there with Pastor Sam Rodriguez and I said, I want every one of those young men to come to Valor Christian College. Six years ago, Gabe was one of those young men. Yes, sir. What's it done in your life? Man, it has been an amazing journey. It really has. God has done amazing things where I had dreamed it as a kid. Yeah. And then I seen it that day happen. Wow. And it was such a prophetic moment. My brother even said it on the yes, stage. Yes. We are prophetically speaking. Yes. And then through that moment, we have seen God move in miraculous ways. My parents are living in the, mir the miracles of God yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. My brother, completely yes. restored by the Lord. Glory to God. And I have seen great things that God has done in the community of Elkhart. Yeah, Indiana. let's talk about that for a moment because you came from Anaheim, California, all the way to Columbus, Ohio for America's camp meeting. And there you were, and the Holy Spirit draw, drew you to the altar and your brother. And I said, I want you in Valor Christian College. That was six years ago. Now listen to where this young man is today. Yes. Tell us what you're doing today. I do pastoral care at Elkhart, Indiana. What was your major? Ooh, 2018, I graduated with my pastoral leadership degree. There and you 2020, go. music and ministry. There you So two, a double. Yes. A double, double. A double, double. And right now you're doing what? Right now I am doing pastoral care. I'm also working with Kid Harvest in Elkhart. And I get the opportunity uh, to aid Miss Katie 
uh, for yeah, Dominion Camp Meeting. That's right. Yes. So his pastor, our campus pastor over there, uh, Pastor Nate, he and Miss Carly over there, his beautiful wife, they just they just wanted to, you know, talk back a little bit. When I said, I want to bring Gabe over for the few weeks of, of internship and then through uh, Dominion camp meeting. Yeah. And they said, wait, you can't take Gabe. We need him too much. You know, that could be you a few years from right now. Your dream can become a reality, but you have to take the first step. Gabe, introduce this beautiful young lady to your left. Yes, this is Kiara Stabler. Hello. And she, I'll let her go ahead and say the rest. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kiara Stapler, and I'm from Elkhart, Indiana. So you kind of met this guy? Yes, actually, I met him at an autism center. Yes. I was a ABA therapist, yes. and he came in randomly, and they were like, here, train him. So wow. I trained him uh, to be an RBT. Yeah. RBT? Um, registered Behavioral Technician. Isn't that amazing? Yes. But now... You're in Columbus, Ohio. I am. It started when he invited me to World Harvest Church Elkhart. Yes. And as soon as I stepped in that church, I felt the Holy Spirit for the first time in my life. Wow. Yeah. Um, I knew who God was. Um, my mom and dad kind of just like church hopped a little bit. Yeah. But um, I finally got to learn from you. Like on the screen, I would go every Sunday and Wednesday and I would learn from you. Oh my things goodness. Things that I never knew before and it was amazing. On the screen there in Elkhart. Yep. Because we live stream over there. Yes. For our campus pastors. And yep. so I'm over there and you're now on the worship team over there. Yes. Right? Yes. I've seen you up there just when I get to come over at that beautiful campus. You know, these kids, I call them, they're my kids, they're examples of what can happen in your life. Yeah. Stop sitting there waiting on God to do something. Yes. Get up, get up and move out toward God. Yeah. Let the beginning be right now, because all you need to do is contact us at valorcollege.edu. And you can become a part, look, unleashed, right? Yeah. These summer internships are the most amazing things. And you're here for a few weeks. Look, your room is paid for. Your meals are paid for. You can earn fully accredited college credit, behind the scenes, hands-on training across 50 ministry areas right here in Columbus, Ohio. You'll go out and participate in student activities all week long. Space is limited and you need to sign up right now. Here's how you do it. Mom, dad, what, what are you letting that young person lay around the house and eat your potato chips for? I'll pay for their potato chips. Get them to Valor Christian College Unleashed. You're not joining the college. You're not enrolling in the college. You're just coming for an intensive of training, fellowship. You're going to have a blast. They have a lot of fun, oh, don't they? a lot they? of fun. I mean, they go swimming. They go to the parks. They go everywhere. But mainly, they go out on the streets. Yes. They learn. You say, I could never do that. That's what they thought. That's what that young man sitting right over there that helps me every service, that's what he thought. But then here comes a Holy Ghost tornado, our City Harvest Network re resident evangelist, the greatest personal soul winner I have ever known. And you will be trained by her in intensively at Unleashed Valor Christian College Summer Internship. Her name is Miss Deborah George. Come over here with me, Miss Deborah. Yes, I told you if you came in here to listen to me tonight, yes, I was sir. gonna Hi, have Pastor you say Ron. hello to these people. Yes, sir. She is the most powerful trainer of soul winners I've ever known. I love to train soul winners, but I'm just telling you, God has specific anointings for specific people, and Miss Deborah is anointed. If you don't believe that, you had 
a few interns go out with you yesterday. Yes, sir. How many did you have? We had about 30 soul winners on the streets with us yesterday. 30 soul winners? Yes, sir. That's three, zero. And Miss Deborah made 31. Yes, sir. They're just out in the streets, right? Yes, there's sir. no PA system. There's no, no Hammond B3 organ. There's no choir. <laughs> there's none of that. There aren't even any walls. They're outside. 30 young people like these in the streets yesterday. How long were you out there? We were there for three hours. Three hours. 30 in three hours won how many people to Jesus yesterday? 240 souls came into the kingdom of God Two. yesterday, and it was powerful. What happened today? Oh, my gosh. Today, we won three, 138 souls today. Amen. I mean, we were stopping the traffic, leading carfuls of people That's at a 580 time. 580 people in two days. Yes, sir. And we were jumping on the city buses, yes. leading eight to ten souls at my a time. Great God. And I just say, Valor is on fire. Yes. And you need to get enrolled for the internship because it is going to be amazing. I'm taking you to the Man. streets where you will see drug dealers and yes. prostitutes yes. and whole families yes. will come into the kingdom of God. You will be so on fire that your life will never be the <laughs> same again. So get enrolled today. Yeah, do it right yeah. now. Stop procrastinating. You have to get here. Miss Deborah has canceled her entire evangelistic schedule across America just to be here for this internship to train you. I don't care if you're 40 or 80. I don't care if you're 18. Miss Deborah will train you how to win souls. And we'll pray for you. That anointing will come on you and you are going to have the time of your life. June 11th, is that right? June 11th, 13th, 13th. June 13th, okay, June 13th through July 11th, and right in the middle of it, what's going on right in the middle of it? Ooh, Dominion, Dominion Camp, Camp Meeting. Dominion Camp <laughs> Meeting. Here's a little bit of what you'll receive at Dominion Camp Meeting. better talk about preachers. Powerless preachers pump the people full of pablum and placating platitudes. A woman only makes 76% of the wage of her counterpart male, but we were... I wonder if you understand tonight that the gates of hell are teetering and tottering, being torn from their rusty hinges by a remnant of believers who are prevailing in prayer and the proclamation of the Great Commission. And tonight we find our voice, and tonight we fix our gaze, and tonight we firm our foundation, and tonight we follow our commander-in-chief into the smoke-filled corridors of conflict because we were built for the battle. We were created for the conflict. Because tonight we Well, that was last year at Dominion. <laughs> it really wasn't. That was about 30 years ago at Dominion Camp Meeting. I remember being in a hotel when I received that. Born to raise hell. I was studying God's Word, getting ready to go preach that night, actually. I, did, I don't go to hotels to vacay. I go to hotels to take an evangelist shower and get to preach somewhere and get back home that night if I can. But I was studying for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might annihilate the works of the devil. And I was sharing with Pastor Clint Brown, Bishop Clint Brown, who was here last Sunday, on the phone. And he said, do you know how that tr really translates? I said, tell me. He said, it actually translates, that word annihilate is translated raise, not R-A-I-S-E, R-A-Z-E, to cause, to cease, to be as though 
It never existed. That's what Jesus came to do. So if the works of hell have found their way into your life, into your family, into your finances, if you're tormented, if you're bound by things you don't want to be bound by, anything you have to have other than Jesus you don't need, Jesus came to destroy it, to cause it to cease to be as though it never existed. Now this coming Sunday morning, this team around here asked me if going into Dominion Camp Meeting 35, the 35th year, if I would go back and re-preach, update some of those messages. So I begin the first one this Sunday, and guess what it is? Born to raise hell. I'm going to be preaching that this coming Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Look, I'd fly in. I'd drive in. I'd ride a bicycle. I'd get here, and if you can't be on line with me, will you do it? Let's covenant together. I'll preach. You be there, <laughs> okay? I'll be here. You be here, or you be there. We're going to have a great time this Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Dominion Camp Meeting, July 1, 2, 3. It's not difficult to remember. Hotels, they told me today, hotels everywhere are just booked out. And we need you to make your arrangements right now. I'll be preaching. Bishop Ron Carpenter is coming all the way from California. He has some of the greatest revelation of, of any preacher I've ever known. God gives him incredible revelation. Pastor Sam Rodriguez, you know, is leading a movement of his people, I will call it, Latinos, into the presence of God like no one we've seen for generations. He'll be here. And then, I suppose I would just as soon, if not rather, listen to this man preach than anybody I've ever known. Bishop Tudor Bismarck. He'll take you through the Bible and bring you out the other side. I'm telling you right now, and he will change your life. And then my daughter, see if you know who it is. Dr. Medina, Dr. Medina Pullings, of course, is going to be with us. Real Talk Kim, who those millions and millions of you that follow her, I knew her before she was Real Talk Kim. She was just Kimberly. And she was one of a trio that traveled across America with me. And Mother Parsley used to call her into her office about twice a week. And so a lot of that testimony she shares about happened right here. And then another one of my great sons just absolutely spreading the fire of revival across America from Houston, Texas. Bishop R.J. Matthews, Bishop Clint Brown will be here in Southbound. The entire Crab family, there's about 127 of them, they'll all be here. Israel Houghton's going to be here. He's going to be, I don't know, he's got a whole bunch, I think he's got 10 coming with him. Shana Wilson Williams is not a guest. She's a part of Harvest Music Live. She'll be here all weekend long. Harvest Music Live will be here. Don't want to miss it. All right. Can I teach now or preach or prophesy or pray or cast out devils? Maybe I'll do all of it. Amen. We need preachers who cease to be specialists. Now, I have a word for you right now, right, right off the top. I have a word for you. Prepare for warfare. Prepare. Devils are agitated. Demonic powers, principalities are aggravated. Something is stirring. I have just put the finishing touches on a brand new book. It began to, in the beginning, it was about 40,000 words. I think it's up to about 90,000 words right now. As the Holy Spirit just keeps pouring that revelation, it's called revival if. And God spoke to me. Demons, principalities, powers, and those 
who are thereby influenced have their dander up and it's going to accelerate. Now, I have that from God. That's not to frighten you. I'm going to tell you in a minute, there is no reason scripturally, according to this book, for you to ever be intimidated by the devil or his kingdom because they have been raised. They have been defeated. They're not going to be defeated. They are defeated. When one red rivulet drop of precious cleansing blood flowed down that naked side and dripped off his toes, it sang out the defeat of your adversary. No reason but a weak faith, a timid faith, will be intimidated. Tweet that. Type that in right now. Lena in Tennessee, Roslyn in Ohio. Can any good thing come out of Ohio? Daisy in Alabama, El Chiva in Florida. We're glad to have you. Patricia in Michigan, Angela in Texas, Matthew in Mississippi. Bill, that's alliterated. Billy in Myrtle Beach, that is not alliterated. Mary in Florida, Danielle in Wisconsin, Joshua in New Mexico, and Brian in Georgia. We love every one of you. Come on, keep, keep commenting. While the kingdom of darkness is about to launch an all-out defensive, you, see, you, you thought you got in front of me, but you didn't, a defensive, That's what they're going to be on. Why? Because we're going to be accelerating your anointing. You're about to go to work. You know what work is? Force against opposition. That's what work is. If you ever grab the bad end of a shovel, you'll understand what work is. It takes energy. It takes effort. It takes force to work. And we must work, the book said, and the book is right and they are wrong. The book said, work while it is yet day, for night cometh when no man can work. Miss Deborah, have you ever seen souls coming into the kingdom like this? Never before. 240, 30 young people, one 240 people, over 500 people in two days in the streets. I asked them if they were in a a coliseum or something. I didn't even know there were that many people in the streets, much less to win that many. Listen, we're going to accelerate your anointing. Anybody around the world watching me tonight? Let me know. Let me know. Come on. I want to know we're reaching the world, not just, you know, Columbus. Hallelujah. I loved what Clint Brown said Sunday morning. He, he's such a tremendous son. And, uh, He said, you know, folks are known, preachers are known in their city, preachers are known in the state, preachers are known in the nation, preachers are known, some of them even around the world. But he said, Pastor Rod Parsley is known in hell. I don't know if he knows that or not, but Dr. Lester Sumrall prophesied that into my life when I was in my early 20s. He said, when you get up and put your foot on the ground in the morning, every devil is intimidated. A timid faith will be intimidated. Tonight, we're going to talk about the Shabbat or the Sabbath anointing. Are you ready? A Sabbath anointing. Let me give you some quotes I always do. My precious mentor, I loved him so very much, and I honor his great legacy. Dr. Oral Roberts said this about the anointing. We should never overlook the power of the anointing God has for us. Before I attempted to do anything, said he, for God, I would cry out, as I did this afternoon, and pray for his anointing. Preacher, do you know this? You listen to some preachers and you say, well, actually I preach better than that, but they seem to get more results. Well, first of all, stop being results oriented. You're supposed to say what God said to who God said, say it, when God said, say it, how God said, say it, close the book, walk off and care less what anybody thought about it, but that audience of one. 
but you think, well, this one seems to have more results. The reason is not because of what they say. When are we ever going to learn this? It's not about what is said. It's about what's on what is said. Did you hear me? I pray every time I have the opportunity to speak to the people of God, I pray God infuse every single word with your anointing. Encapsulate it in your anointing. Infuse it, encapsulate it in your holy anointing. Because my dear brother and sister, it is the anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. Catherine Kuhlman said this, do you want to know what the anointing will cost you? With her little finger bent and pointing at you. The anointing will cost you. Do you really want to know, she said? It will cost you everything. That's why so few have so little of it. It's not free. It costs. Everyone knows the analogy of the pressing of the olives to produce that precious oil. Charles Perham said, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is given to illuminate the Word of God. Do you ever wonder why you read the Scriptures and it seems like you're reading, you know, I don't even know what, what do they still have Newsweek and that kind of thing? I don't even know. I don't read any of it. The Holy Spirit illuminates the Word of God. It makes it come alive to open the Scriptures and to place the spiritual man in direct communication with the mind of God. I say it this way. The anointing is to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Oswald J. Smith, here it is. I shared with you that I'd be talking to you about this. Oswald J. Smith said this, fear of the devil is nonsense. Fear of demons is foolish. The spirit of God's anointing, the Christian heart makes the soul impregnable to the forces and powers of darkness. I feel that right now. There's a 22-year-old. Satan is desiring to gain access into your heart. You're right now asking yourself, should I or shouldn't I? The very fact that you're asking that question is your answer. Resist, James 4, 7. Resist, that's a word of action. Resist the devil in word and deed, and he will flee from you. He will seek safety in flight. He will run away in horror. Those are the translations. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you from your attempt to torment that precious mother's mind concerning her child. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke. Some of you ought to start praising God right now for the cancer you never had because the Holy Ghost resisted it. That accident that you never entered into. Look, this is no time to be fast and loose. I'm not trying to be Mr. Gillicuddy. I'm not trying to be Mr. Meanness. I'm warning you. The lights are not flashing yellow. They're flashing red. Resist the devil. See, you have to do something 
because he is like a roaring lion. He's roaming to and fro, looking for whom he may devour. Ah, but listen to this. Satan hath desired to have you, said Jesus. <laughs> to the apostle Peter, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Wait for it. But I have prayed for thee that your faith fail not. What? That your faith fail. Watch, watch, watch. You must learn to pray with specificity. You must understand that when you bring your petitions to God and make them known, you must not pray in vague generalities. No, 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 no. Pray with intention. Pray with purpose. Satan has desired to have you. Now, that doesn't mean you're to fear him. Folks often share dreams that they have with me because of my teachings on dreams and visions. They say, Pastor, I had this dream, and it was a very negative dream. And they say, is God telling me that's going to come to pass? I said, why would God warn you of something to come to pass for you to walk through it? He warns you that you might resist in word and deed. Get up out of your bed and dance in the Holy Ghost of God and show that you have victory. 1 Samuel 16, 13 is very telling, informative. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. Think of it as anointing. He took the horn of oil. Horn is necessary to be understood. He took a horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord, that'll be important later, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. In other words, he was anointed. But did you ever notice that Saul, his predecessor, was anointed? The Bible says he was. But he was not anointed with a horn. He was anointed with a cruise. A cruise is a man-made anointing. So many have been touched only by man-made anointing. Oh, but thanks be to God for those who have humbled themselves under his mighty hand and felt that divine touch that is unlike any other and anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. And always remember this, Psalm 105, verse 15, do not touch my anointed ones. Do his prophets no harm. Hear me. Hear me closely. With the tongue, we bless and we curse. I was with Brother Copeland. It was a gathering of preachers, and preachers were eating with preachers. And I saw Brother Copeland get up from his table and take his plate with him and move across the room, sit down at another table. Well, he's always been more than gracious and kind to me. I love him with all my heart. So I thought, well, he's sitting over there by himself. I'll just go over there and sit down with him. So I went over there and sat down. I asked him, might I sit with you, Brother Copeland? Oh, yes, sir, I'd sit down. I said, why did you get up and leave the table? He said, I, I don't allow my ears to hear one speak against another. I'm just, I'm letting it ooze down like the ointment 
over the head of Aaron that ran down into the breast of his garment and into the loins of his garment. Oh, I sense the Holy Spirit right now. I rebuke that critical spirit. You hate it. You despise it. While the words are coming out of your mouth, you wish you could reach out and grab hold of them and pull them back in. Well, we just cancel the assignment of those words. Let them be annihilated. Now I seal you by the prayer of faith that negative words, critical words, Binding, hurtful words never come out of your mouth toward any servant in the kingdom of God's Christ. Oh, grant it now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Here's good news for you, 1 John 2, 20. You have an anointing. Where did it come from? From the Holy One and you know things. You know all things. Do you know what that means? That means the anointing of the Holy Spirit can go where you can't go, see and hear what you can't see and hear, and then come back and tell you what it is. That's what the anointing can do. Now, I wrote a book a few years ago called The Jubilee Anointing. Thank God we've got folks. I'm going to let you look at this for a moment while I tell you some of the folks joining us around the world, you better shout after every one of them. I'll say the the nation and you you get on there and type glory. Mexico, glory. The Philippines, Granada, Granada, Zambia, Cayman Islands, Guyana, Mali, New Zealand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Ghana, Germany. I'm not making these up. These are folks that are telling us right now that they are joining us live. Congo, Belize, Rwanda, Papua New Guinea, Pakistan. Glory to God. Pastor Fiaz is over there right now. He's actually on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan winning thousands of Afghan refugees to Jesus and starting brand new churches. Glory to God. Pakistan, Tanzania, Jamaica, Austria, Hong Kong, Bangladesh, China. You can't stop God's word. No iron curtain can keep it out. Hallelujah. No Berlin Wall that was brought down can stop the gospel. I was there in, I was sharing with Miss Deborah, I was there in, in what was Leningrad. I was preaching the second night of the first open to the public gospel crusade in over 70 years, just after the failed coup of Mikhail Gorbachev. I was there in my early, mid-twenties, standing in the arena built for the Olympic Games, the 22,000-seat Lennon Sports Arena. While I was there preaching that night, 22,000 thousand seats. Up to my left, an entire battalion of the Red Army still in their uniforms. If I could be intimidating, I, intimidated I would have been. I'm in a nation that hasn't heard the Word of God. It meant imprisonment to own a page of the Bible for 70 years. That's what socialism does for you. That's what communism does for you. Just remember that. I gave the altar call, and that entire battalion of the Red Army came to the front of the building and gave their lives to Christ. I reached out my hands over them, and I said, Receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it was like you were mowing a lawn. Upon the floor they went, and got up speaking in a heavenly language, no one even touching them. 
They went outside that arena and stopped city buses in the streets and told what had happened to them. They told the people to make an altar out of the city bus seats and people by the thousands knelt in city buses, backed up as far as you could see, giving their lives to Jesus. It's not what you say. It's what's on what you say. You want that kind of an anointing? Well, you don't get it. I had a dear friend. Her name was Bobby Jo Harrison. You can tell she's from the South. <laughs> Bobby Jo. And she was a lady preacher. She was about as big as you, Miss Deborah, a bar of soap. And, uh, but she was mighty in God, mighty in God. And she told me once, she said, I, I lived in a trailer and I, I, I'd crawl around that trailer praying, begging God to anoint me. She traveled with the national ministry at that time. She said, oh God, anoint me like I see you use so-and-so. Oh God, she would cry. She crawled all the way through that trailer and she found herself in the bathroom draped over the closed seat of the toilet, just praying, God anoint me. She said, as clear as I ever heard anything, Pastor Rod, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Bobby Joe, the toilet does not need a healing. She said in that moment, God said to me, you want the anointing to flow? Go where the needs are. Whew. I'm just about to get up and run. I don't know why you're not commenting. India, Kenya, Lithuania, Uganda, Albania, Peru, Canada. I don't know that one. It, you may, do you mean Chechnya? Maybe that's what you mean. Spain as well. Thailand, Norway, Ukraine, yeah. Australia. Listen, God is a God of timing. God is a God of purpose. God is a God of season. God's a God of intention, of purpose timing. I wrote this book, The Jubilee Anointing, in a jubilee year. Now, what is that? A jubilee is a Sabbath, a Sabbath year. Your Bible says you shall count seven times seven. Do you know what that is? It's 49. You shall count seven sevens. And then on that coming year, it shall be a year of jubilee. So that's a Sabbath. God said specific things are going to happen in that year. Debts are going to be canceled. People are going to be loosed from their bondages, so on and so forth. Then there's another Sabbath. You know about that one, surely. It comes every seven years. That's a Shemitah year, a Sabbath year, a year of rest, a year of forgiveness of debt, a year when things are set free. Then you know about this, and this day, every seventh day, one day out of seven is a what? Sabbath. God is very, very intentional and intentive to regarding his Sabbaths. What began as a caution with COVID has now become a convenience. Listen to me. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and even the more as you see that day approaching. Are you listening to me? God takes note of the Sabbath. 
In six days, God created the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. And on the seventh day, a Sabbath, he rested. That's why I always wonder in America, you know, why we, why we have a five-day work week. I don't. I never have. I've got a little audience over here, by the way, and, and they're supposed to be commenting and praying with you as you ask for prayer. They are doing it, and they're doing it all over the building right now. So get your prayer requests put in there. Come on. Come on. You've got to be a participant. All right. God cares so much about his Sabbaths that he made it one of the 10 suggestions. No, no. One of the 10 commandments. Now, for those of you that think Jesus did away with the commandments, you're totally wrong. The curse of the law was not that there was one. <laughs> oh, great God. Everybody always wants freedom. They have no idea what they're asking for. Without freedom, there are no boundaries. Without freedom, you don't have a river, you have a swamp. With total freedom, I should say. Where does freedom end? Where does my freedom end when it infringes on your freedom? I don't know if you're listening to me tonight. These are commands. They are not optional. They are not flexible. One of those commandments of only 10, Jesus came to fulfill the law. The curse of the law is not that there is a law. The curse of the law was that there was no ability from God, no power to keep the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. What does that mean? That means that the Lord Jesus does not wipe away the law, but rather gives you the power to keep the law. You don't have to commit adultery. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You don't have to lie. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You don't have to be a thief. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You don't have to disrespect your parents. You don't have to create graven idols, you know, idols fashioned by the hands, the idols made according to the similitude of a God you desire to worship because that God allows you to do whatever you want in your total freedom. You're not listening to me. God gives you the ability to keep the law, to keep the commands, one of which is you shall keep the Sabbath day holy. Well, if it's the Sabbath day, what about the Sabbath every seven years? What about the Jubilee Sabbath, a year among 50? Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Now, we've rewritten that. We've reimagined it. We've redesigned it. We say, remember the hour and a half on Sunday morning and keep that holy. No, no, no. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now, Jesus gives you the power to do that, but he did something far beyond that in Luke chapter 4. Think about it for a moment. He had been in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. When you think of wilderness, you think of, 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 of you know, barren desert. That's not where he was. He was in the wilderness. You know, think of... Uh, the wilderness of the great Smoky Mountains with no inhabitants there. He was there. 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says tempted of the devil. That's where we get the great preaching sermon. It is written, it is written, it is written, it is written spirit, it is written soul, it is written body, always answering the devil's affront with a counteroffensive 
speaking the word of God. But then he came down out of the mountain of temptation in Luke chapter 4. And when he came down, the Bible says, he went into the synagogue and it was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he, finding the place, you know what that means? He knew where it was. (laughs) Do you know where things are in your Bible? There are things in my Bible, I know exactly where they are. I know on what page they are. I know where on the page they are and in what, which one of the two columns and on how far down. I've been there before, you see. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he began to read. Are you ready? The Spirit of the Lord, the anointing is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, insert the word right there, your name. He has sent Pastor Rod to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to set at liberty them that are bruised, recovery of sight to the blind. Verse 19, to preach, here it is, the acceptable year of the Lord. That's one of those jubilee years. So it's a Sabbath. Something happens on the Sabbath. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. If you have your Bible out, circle sat down. If you don't, type it in so you don't forget it. He sat down. That's so important because there was, I learned this in my very first trip to the nation of Israel. There's a chair in the synagogue that no one was permitted to sit in. It was called the chair of the Messiah. He broke every religious rule. No wonder they became so angered they tried to kill him. He sat down in that seat. They all looked at him like, what in the world do you think you're doing? And he looked back at them as if to say, I know exactly what I'm doing because I know exactly who I am. And then he made it worse. He said to them today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Wait a minute. They knew, they had a Jewish calendar. They knew that it was not the year of Jubilee. It was not even on the Sabbath day. It was not even on a Shemitah year, one every seven. And he's announcing that what's supposed to go on on those days is now fulfilled in your ears. He was saying anything that has to do with that, you can have right now. Do you know that today is your Sabbath? You say, Pastor Rob, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is your Sabbath too. Tuesday was your Sabbath and likewise with Monday. Your Sabbath anointing rests in the mighty power of Jesus the Christ. Christ, the anointed one and his anointing resides, my great God, on the inside of you right now. If God be for you, who shall be against you? Jesus walked out of that synagogue. They grabbed him by the nap of his neck and said a one and a two and a three and they released him to cast him over that mountainside to his death. But your Bible said he passed through the midst of them. Can I announce to you right now? May I? May I announce to you that your Sabbath anointing is present right now? Right now. I need you to understand, you have a passing through anointing. Fear not, 
why not? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Why not? For I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. Oh, with the right hand of my righteousness. Eric in Pakistan, I need liberation from black magic. Lay your hands, Eric, right here. The seat of both fear and faith. The inward parts. They both live right there and they are mutually exclusive. Now that foul spirit is about to leave you. It seems to me that it's been there 17 years, but it's about to leave you. It will go because it has no choice. The victory is not won now, you foul spirit. The victory was won by the blood of Christ on Calvary and by his Father raising him from the dead. You know that. I adjure you by God. I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointed one in his anointing, and I command you, come out of him now and enter no more. Now type in there, I'm free. Come on, type in there, I'm free. No manifestations except freedom. Freedom, joy, victory, peace. I rebuke every invasion of the forces of darkness arrayed against you, against your family, against your financial stability. Stop. Stop speaking all of those negative things. I feel the Spirit of God speaking through me right now. Stop. Stop. Turn the news off for a month. Open up the Word like Jesus did and find your anointing. This is your day. This is your Sabbath. I, I lost track of time. I, I apologize. We got started a little bit late. If you do not know the Lord Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't have that overwhelming sense of calm, of peace, that regardless of what comes and goes, I'm not talking about happiness. I'm talking about joy. I'm, I'm not even sure God called His people to be happy, but He sure called them to be joyful. His joy comes to you now. You've been so burdened down, so weighted, but it's the wrong weight. He wants to weight you down with His holy presence right now, right there where you are. If you don't know Him, you can. You can. He is knowable. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, right now, I ask you to manifest yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Become real to searching hearts. Become real to those burdened. So real that your anointing on this their Sabbath lifts their burden, breaks every bondage, frees every tormented mind. Brandy, I command your blood pressure to come to normal. Come to normal. Just lay your hands on yourself. You have to learn to do it. His Word said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you're sick and you've got hands, lay your hands on yourself right now right now. Help me, fellas. Give me, give me some more. Nicholas needs prayer for protection. 
pray this every morning and every night. Declare it and decree it, Nicholas. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If you're tired of people talking about you, stop talking about people. If you're tired of them speaking negatively, stop speaking negatively. You reap what you sow. Your mouth is a seed sack and you're sowing all day long. Hear me. Pray for my seven-year-old boy, autistic. I speak to every autism spectrum disorder. I thank you, my God, for victory over PDD, ADD, ADHD. I thank you that they have no symptoms of such, including Oh, but not limited to echolalia and perseveration. I thank you, my God, for mending the mind. I thank you for bringing sensory systems into alignment with your word. I thank you that they function as neurologically, socially, sensorily, academically, intellectually normal, that they are neuronormal, as though that plague had never been visited upon the sons of men. I thank you for freedom, Lord. I pray for every parent. I know their burden. And Satan, enough is enough. Take your hands off our children, off our teenagers, off our young adults. And I thank you. I thank you, my God, that you are Jehovah, Rafika. You are the eternally self-existent God who heals. Heal everyone now, Lord, every blood condition, every heart condition, every condition of the bones, of the muscles, every, 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 every affliction that weakens the muscles, every affliction that attacks the bones, every leukemia, every cancer. I thank you, Lord, for your healing power flowing right now for that anointing that I ask you for. All glory to you, Lord Jesus. All praise to you, mighty God forever and forever, and forever and forever. Do miracles tonight that for the endless ages of eternity around your throne, there will be constant praise as a result of what you do this night. For you alone are worthy. You alone are glorious and mighty and holy and pure. Now bring joy and peace to all of my friends. Make them the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Though none go with us, we will follow. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your cross. Thank you, our Father for raising him to life again. We bless your holy name. Give us souls, Lord, lest we die. Save our families. Save our neighbors. Save our bosses. Save our staff members. Save those connected to us in any way. 
depopulate hell and populate heaven tonight, Lord. I ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Alicia in Jamaica, pray for my finances. We will continue. David in Louisiana, my father has Huntington's disease. Well, let's not claim it. Let's start saying my father has been healed of Huntington's disease. Blessed be his holy name forever. Sean, I need my family to be saved. You're the greatest witness they've got. You're the king, his kingdom come to earth and his will be done in earth. Just live big for Jesus. Let his joy and his countenance, his anointing flow through you by your very presence when you're around your family. And believe God, oftentimes, oftentimes, this is not an excuse, but I have studied soul winning enough to know more times than not, your family members that you're praying for will be won to God's kingdom by someone else. You have to pray that, that they're kind of blinded in regard to you, but someone else can get to them and you start praying for that person that their paths will cross and you just live big for Jesus in front of them. Amen. Don't you be critical of them. Don't you call them a sinner. They know they're a sinner. <laughs> they're well acquainted. Amen. I just believe your family's going to be saved by the end of this year. I sense that in my spirit. Just lay hold on it. If you want me to agree with you for your family to come into the kingdom of God before the end of this year, type it in right now. Pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for my family. They'll give me a printout and I'll put my hands on them and believe God to save your family. The apex of all Christian endeavor must become to place the jewel of a soul in the crown of our Savior, the Lamb of God slain, receive the reward of his suffering. Now, don't forget, I'm going to do this tonight for your love gift of any size. And again, thank you, those of you that helped last week. You were so generous. You responded, and I want to thank you for it. I told him afterwards, I said, well, I really asked the people to help me, and I'm praying that they will. They came into agreement with me, and you did. I need you to do that again. <laughs> you know, the bills come every month. You, you know, they, you understand that. And so we thank God. We're not going under. As you just saw, we're reaching 22 million brand new households. You help us do that. We had three cameras go down in one Sunday morning service a few weeks ago. I said, how much is it going to cost to fix them? And they said, just use your faith, Pastor. <laughs> and I'm using my faith. So please help us tonight. I know the Lord will bless you as you do. So so your gift of any size tonight, and I'm going to send you the Jubilee anointing. Amen. The Sabbath anointing. And when you sow $40 or more, I can't believe they put this out of here, but they told me to believe. I believe. And the reason I can't is because, quite frankly, I have been studying the transcripts of these very messages in the last week. The first one, this I believe, one of the greatest messages God ever anointed me to preach. This I believe, Jesus paid it all. The second, the irrefutable truth of the Bible. Number three, Jesus saves. That was inspired by my free will Baptist pastor as a child, the great Clarence A. Newman. You don't know him, but heaven does, and I do. He used to sing a song, strumming an old flat top guitar, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the news to every land, echo back the ocean caves. Earth will keep her jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. That's that message. And then the final message of the four, reject the remedy and accept 
the antidote. Reject the remedy or accept the antidote. It'll bless you and it's available to you. Free download when you sow a seed of $40 or more. If you can do more, please do. We've got these students out winning 500 people in two days to Jesus. You want to support that. If you'll support souls, God will support you. And that's what we're all about here. So please do that. Don't forget this Sunday morning, I'm going to preach a remix of the message from Dominion Camp Meeting, Born to Raise Hell. I pray the Lord's richest blessing on you. I love you so much. I promised myself I'd stop at 8.30 and it's 8.29, even though we got a late start. I love you. Please tell a friend about these Wednesday night times together. I just feel they're so powerful in God. I feel that they'll touch people's lives and help them. So share, 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 comment, comment, comment. Do all those things that you do on social media to be a blessing. We're right there for you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hey, if you're not on my YouTube channel, get on there. What do they do for that? What do you do? You don't like it. You don't like and subscribe. Subscribe. That's what we need you to do. And I believe you'll be blessed for it. All of the information you need about everything, rodparsley.com. Good night. Welcome to church! We're so glad you could join us at the Harv today. Happy Sunday. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work. To use your smart giving, open your text messaging app and send a message to the number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you are already registered, the process is just the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space, WHC, You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.
prayer was released in your life in a day. like this anymore. Somebody must. God brought me back from the dead, so here I am. 